why is it that science that there are science popularizers? Like we don't have like UFC popularizers, we don't have movie popularizers, we don't have TikTok popularizers, but we have this whole class of people called science popularizers. And I'm all for. I've had talked to Neil deGrasse Tyson, Mitch Yoko, I've talked to these people. It's Brian Cox, Brian Green. But the thing is, we as scientists have been given this incredible script, the script of nature or of God, if you will. Um, we have this incredible uh, present, and we are so bad at communicating what we do. And worse than that, we don't feel like it's our obligation. I, I always joke, and maybe it's not even a joke. Scientists have a moral obligation to communicate what they do to the people that fund them, but they also have, you know, just common sense. If the public gets turned off, to science because the scientists say, ah, I am too specialized for you, Joe. I can't break it down for an everyman to understand. What I do is very – I should stay in the lab because we need people that just stay in the lab. And I always joke like, how do you know a scientist is outgoing? Have you ever heard of one? No. They look at your shoes when they talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. But if I don't teach my students these things, if I don't teach them, look, part of the soft skills that will get you farther in life and all the Nobel laureates that I've talked to, they all have that in common. They're not just awesome and the top elite killers of science, Joe. They're incredible communicators, persuaders, salesmen, saleswomen. Mm. Because you don't just make a great idea and everyone accepts it. You have to convince people, editors, peer reviewers, funding agencies. And you're in a complex battle against the world's other killers. And what if you're just a little bit better than them because you have learned that it's important for you to communicate to your bosses, to your funding agents, such that we don't have this elite that the general public can't understand. So they just defer to whoever's, you know, uh, whichever way the wind's blowing. And we have what we've had for the last few years. Well, don't you think that the reason why you have so many science influencers or science educators is because science is way more complicated than all those other things? I don't know. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Of Joe. course it is. It is, so? it, is. It, it is and it isn't. It is and isn't. Do you know the difference? Oh, I don't want to say it like that. I'm going to say there's a difference between complex and complicated. Okay. So a complicated thing is building a 787 Dreamliner. That's freaking complicated. There's over 700 million, you know, parts to it. There's a supply chain. There's, you know, like mm -hmm. f, f that. People don't know how to build a pencil. Like, there's no one person. Have you heard that? Like, that knows how to get the graphite and the wood and the eraser right. and the metal and the yeah. paint. There's no one person that has so something as simple as a pencil could be considered comp. But complicated means if you follow it. My PhD thesis: if you follow it, you will build a polarimeter that's capable of measuring the cosmic microwave background's polarization. Like, there's just it's just linear steps. There's complexity. Like if you try to make a sand pile and have exactly the same number of grains of sand, or if you want to have this particular thunderstorm that's brewing in the plains of Austin, Texas tonight, um, that is a complex system. That is a system that is not capable of being described by a finite number of steps. It may have properties. It may have phases. It may have building phase, dissipating phase, hail, whatever. But And it may have commonalities, but like the butterfly effect, the flapping of the – you cannot – replicate the sensitivity to the initial conditions that then lead to a complex event. Science can be both complicated and complex, but there's just no there's no way around this. If you can't explain it to somebody who is not an expert, you have failed at a certain level. Because just imagine if you were working like, do you think it's complicated to be um, to be an accountant at a top 10 accounting firm? Is that correct? Yeah. So imagine your boss, this, the CFO of that company comes and says, hey, Joe Rogan, um, what you been working on? He said, what I've been working on is very complicated. It's very sophisticated. It's very complex. It's very tough. You won't understand it. That's the implication. You're insulting the person. I'm insulting the general public. If I say I can't explain to you why this is the freaking absolute coolest thing in the world to do, and if you didn't pay me, or Gavin Newsom, my boss, your former governor, if he didn't pay me to do it, Joe, I would do it for free. In other words, we are so animated by it. But why don't we do it? Because actually it's the converse of what you said. Communicating to the public is hard to scientists. It's not the science that's hard to do. It's to learn how to distill it and teach it to. I've had over 2,000 students in my career. I don't think I'm the best teacher, but I think I can do a good job enough to take somebody who was a lay person and now they're an expert. And now they're teaching down the street from me or down the street from you here. And they're much better and smarter than I am. How did that happen if I didn't dedicate some time to it? But what scientists will say is, no, I want to study wormholes. Uh, it's not really that important. That's the subtext. 
What Neil deGrasse Tyson, it's not that important. What he's doing, he can't do real. This is the, this is the rap. I'm not saying I believe this, but this is the rap. You know, he he is not a real scientist. And he won't say he is not doing research. He doesn't have students. But he's not really a scientist the way that I, Brian Keating, am a scientist because he's not actively in the trenches. Because if he were, he wouldn't have time to go out. That's BS. I'm mm. sorry. That's BS. Well, what I meant is that it's complicated to do. Um, in terms of so like expressing mechanics. that to people and there's so many things to cover There's so many things and you also have to captivate people's attentions. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think it's and there's also various Fields of science that you I mean try explaining string theory to regular people you can do it you can you but can I mean it. It's very complicated, right? You know, can do like, it. Eric you, Weinstein can do that. He can talk to people. oh, he'll put you in a coma <laughs> He will put you in a coma. He, I'll say, <laughs> keep it simple for me. Help me out, and he'll on purpose. Just well, that's called the ex that's a bias called the expert effect. Like you're so smart, you just don't realize what it was like. Now, like uh, you can do things in the gym. I'm sure, like you don't even know that you're doing them, but to teach it to me would be impossible, right? Because it's just like encoded and viscerally into your DNA by this point. I think I can teach you. You could teach. Yeah, you, if your body moves normal, I could teach you. What would happen if the public cut? cut off science. If they said, we don't, look what happened the last couple of years. Like, we don't know who to believe. We don't know where is the ground truth. Right. Who do we believe? I hear so RFK. Defund science. Yeah, I, we're going to defund science. So you're unemployed. By the way, I only have the job I have now and not like building some weapon because we're not at war. Right. And, you know, 60 years ago in Oppenheimer, you'll, you'll watch it. Right. You know, like they took the, the killers of science right. and they were all in the desert in Los Alamos and they were squirreled away and they didn't tell anybody. And, right. and the same thing was going on in London and England uh, working on radar and the same thing was going on in, in MIT. And it's, it's just we serve at the pleasure of the public as scientists. And when too few of us realize this and too few of us view it as a moral obligation to communicate back to the public. And so, therefore, we have this industry of science popularizers and some people make quite a good living at it.